Hello. Today I'm going to show you the Fremencio workout for valve in valve tower with a mitral flow valve. This is one of the more common surgical valve that you might see coming back with degeneration uh, requiring valve in valve tower workout. So this one of the different aspects of this valve compared to other valves is that it's an exteriorly mounted pericardial valve, uh, meaning that the leaflets, the bovine pericardial leaflets are actually mounted outside a surgical valve frame. And so the risk of point obstruction would be higher with this valve than let's say a uh, intra frame mounted surgical valve. So the other thing that's different with this valve is that on the valve in valve app, if you look at the bench model, the inflow is actually a flat line or, or a plane. But if you look at the actual surgical valve implant, it's actually like a wavy uh, curve. So I'll show you in a moment. And that's because when we tie down the sutures uh, onto the annulus, uh, it actually deforms the surgical valve uh, inflow where the sewing cuff is. That's why it becomes a wavy form. So I'll show you how this is done. So first, this is one of the more challenging valve to evaluate because the commercial posts are not easy to see. In fact, you probably can't even see it at all. Uh, so you have to rely on kind of the leaflet uh, morphology as you look up the aortic root. And also because the waviness of the inflow is also maybe difficult to identify the base of the annulus to create the annular plane. So first what I did is also, you can see that the fibular booming artifact with this particular valve. So I typically like to drop the gain as much as possible because the internal diameter is actually quite a bit smaller if you look at uh, Vini Bapa's valve and valve app uh, compared to the actually the manufacturer label. So first you can see this valve, uh, fortunately the resolution is very good here. So you can see actually down on the bottom left that the uh, surgical valve leaflets can be visible. So typically what I do is I actually go back to more like a native annular analysis where I bisect the left sinus with the open red circle. And then I can, you can see here, I can put a dot at the base of the mitral flow frame. And I do the same thing with the right sinus by rotating counterclockwise. And then again, to the non-sinus rotating counterclockwise again. The other thing what I do is I also remember on the surgical tab valve with tower and tower, I eliminate a lot of the ascending aortic analysis because you want to keep the center line perpendicular to the valve frame. So you can see that here, it can be very tricky with the mitral flow valve because you don't see the commercial pulse. So you kind of want to roughly get as center as possible with the valve frame itself. So you can see now I'm going looking at the non sinus and I'm just trying to come down to the base of it. Remember this is a wavy line, so it might not be perfect. And then you can see that here with the green dot at the right, base of the right sinus, and again here, base of the left sinus. And then I remember keep this in a center line as much as possible. So you can see this is not bad here. So after I do this, then I click OK and confirm. And I'm going to crop these two panels to try to magnify it. And so you can see now how some of this may look. So first of all, I'm going to go in and use the lasso tool to go trace out the inner diameter of this valve. You can see here, even a 21 millimeter mitral flow is actually quite small. Now, although you can see it's around 21 millimeter here, in reality, it's actually smaller because there's a space between this. This is the plastic frame, but the actual stand ID and true ID is going to be a bit smaller, as you've seen in the valve and valve app. But either way, it's going to be a 20. Uh, three millimeter, 20 millimeter balloon expandable valve, depending on how you size this, or a 23 millimeter uh, self expanding valve. Even though the perimeter is 66.6, .6, but remember, it is smaller than what it will be. And so we typically go with what the valve and valve app will say. 
and this is, will be the annular diameter. And then I go down to the LVOT view. As I mentioned before, it's less critical for patients who have a standard surgical valve, but with the standard valve, this is gonna be more important in terms of conduction system issue and how you oversize this. This LVOT, I'm gonna save this. So I'm moving this relatively quickly. If you want to review how I do these tracings, you, I will recommend you going to my other presentations and videos to tutorial to show how this is done. So I go up now to the STJ here. You can see the patient has a very short left main bifurcation. So I've cut right across the left main. And I see where this disappears to, and you can see here a very small root, short root, 14.2 millimeters sinus for salva height. I'm going to measure the STJ that I mentioned. Now remember, you want to go inside the calcium, not outside the calcium. And then I right click to select the STJ and see where the left main height is. It's very short, 3.4 millimeter. That makes sense because it's a super annular valve. It implants above the annular, so the root's small. So likely that's going to be smaller. So now here's where the difficulty lies. You can see that here, the height of the surgical valve. Now we typically go by what the valve and valve app shows, but I also look at the CT to see where the leaflets disappear. In this case, I'm going to stop part around at 14 millimeters and then just go down to the base. We do this right click and custom link measurement. So, and I do the same thing here on the right side. What I'm doing is I'm drawing a box, a virtual box, showing what the leaflet looks like when it pins open, become a tube graph with this surgical valve after the valve and valve. Now the inner diameter, remember, is gonna be smaller because it's 21 mitral flow, but the hour of interest, because the waist, if we're gonna put in a 20 millimeter prosthesis, that's gonna be the waist. So I'm gonna put a 20 millimeter here, You can see this risk of coronary obstruction here with the valve in valve. Now, the other way to do this, and the most definitive way in my mind, is actually look at floral. So you go to a, take a picture in the calf lab, you go an LAO cranial view, and then you basically do a semi-selective shot or even a pigtail shot to see how the left main clears with the valve. And you'll see that sometime with the pulmonary artifact, this uh, virtual valve to coronary distance or VTSTJ distance is actually uh, looks ominous on CT, but actually on floral is much uh, more generous. So with that, you can decide whether to protect the left main or may need to use uh, leaflet management strategy like basilica to avoid coronary obstruction. But in general, uh, obviously CT is the standard, but I typically rely on floral because you have a higher resolution and less booming artifact. So next I'm going to look at the sinotubular junction. Again, this is a difficult measurement with this particular valve. So I still go by commissure to sinus and commissure to sinus as a base. And you can see that here, the sinus is a pretty big, particularly for this anatomy, the right sinus is a little smaller and the non-sinus. So next I'm gonna go from one millimeter cut as I told you before, and I'm gonna draw a 20 millimeter circle because that's the valve that I'm gonna be putting in, in terms of the waist and based on the valve and valve app. So you can see that here, I'm gonna see how it looks like. Now, as I mentioned before, with this extra pericardially mounted valve, the frame here, the circle will not be representative of the leaf, actual leaflet. So if the leaf is very bulky on echo, just be aware of the increased coronary obstruction risk, even though your VTC might be favorable. Again, correlating the echo, the CT and the floral on NGO is gonna be extremely helpful with these types of prosthesis, especially like I said, with externally mounted leaflets, like the mitral flow and the trifecta. So I've done this 10 millimeters. So now I'm gonna to go to measure the 
STK, I'm gonna take a picture here. And then I'll take a picture also with the sinuses. Now, we're important that this is the top of the valve based on our CT measurement. So I'm gonna do a virtual valve to STJ distance to assess the coronary obstruction risk. And you can see that here. So you can see there's a lot of sinuses, but really what you care about is what you see up here, because this controls the sinus sequestration and the sinus flow. Now, of course, their blood flow can go around this area as well, but this is a good conservative way to determine what it looks like. And of course you exclude the calcium here. This is an estimate, you can see this is the root. So you can see it to how the measurement looks. And then you can also see how this looks here in terms of the risk of Corner obstruction. VTC to left main. So this is the right coronary takeoff. So you can see that this is the right on the right panel. This is the right coronary height. This is the sinus tubular junction height, sinus height. And again, you can see that here how it looks. Typically, the right quadrant is less likely to be obstructed, but because of this would appear small, we just, in the interest of so showing you how it would look. And remember, if you use a balloon expandable valve, particularly if you're going to oversize this quite a bit, even especially with 23, these leaflets can flare outwards. And so you actually can increase the coronary obstruction risk even more. So just something to keep in mind when you measure this. So this is not uh, necessarily the actual final length. It's a small conservative estimate. So now I go back to the annular plane and of course, looking at the ascending you know, route, you can see this is not well segmented. So I'm gonna skip this, but what you see here is kind of how it looks the mitral flow. So I can use to have to drop the gain to make sure I don't overestimate and underestimate the internal diameter. But you can see how it is wavy like this. That's because the suturing along the analyst, remember the along at the analyst, you know, it's not a planar structure, it's like a scallop structure. So that's why you see this kind of infinity or, or wavy uh, contour of the mitral flow valve because the sewing ring got deformed. It's not like the straight line that you see on the valve in valve app. So now I'm going to use click on the C arm button to figure out the aortic root angle and also some of the implant angle. And I'll show you with this particular valve how that works. So this is the aortic root angle. And you can see that now here, I try to kind of make this as symmetric as possible, but sometimes you will see that it's not. So you just kind of get your best estimate. So if you see the LAO view, this is the LAO cranial view. That's what I mean. If you have to do a semi-selective or pigtail shot on this view to see the left main obstruction risk. Remember the leaflets don't go all the way to the edge. It's actually inside the edge a little bit, but what you see is the leaflet that's exterior mounted that would make it look like this. So just keep that in mind, the room actually, it might be actually roomier than you expected. Now, having said that, if you use a balloon expandable valve, as I mentioned, then you might actually deflect it a little bit more outward and may actually still have the obstruction of the left main coming out. So you can see this is now the RAO view as well.
So let's take a look at the report. So you can see the analyst LVOT. So you can see there's no surgical valve frame easily visible here. It's almost like a native root analysis. And I typically do the same thing here. So I'm gonna bring this VTC down to the bottom of the screen and bring it down here. This, it's again, the formatting thing. You don't have to do this. And so this is kind of the workup that I do for the mitral flow valve for valve in valve. Of course, you can save this and share it with your heart team. You can also save this in a session that you want. And so I hope this is helpful to you in terms of a valve in valve workup for TAVR in a mitral flow valve. And I'll see you next time.